Thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure being among you. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for your support for Iranian women, for our progressive revolution called Women, Life, Freedom. I really appreciate your help. I heard your words. I cried. But as you know me, I'm a badass. I have too much demands. You can put pressure on Justin Trudeau and ask him to be tough on Islamic Republic, especially put the Revolutionary Guards on the terrorist list. You can pass this message to him. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Thank you, you and Watch, for inviting me. I want to say that eight years ago when I launched my campaign against compulsory hijab, I got invited by you and Watch. And uh, that time, my fight against compulsory hijab and the fight of millions of ordinary women against compulsory hijab was not that popular. People were hesitating to invite us. People believed that if they talk about force a job, and if they invite me, they will cause Islamophobia. And many feminists who were my heroes when I was in Iran, and I was begging them to take the side, they actually put the blame on me and saying that, why did you attend a UN Watch event in Geneva? Because they are supporting Israel. My message that time was clear. But I want to repeat it here again. We, the women of Iran, we, the people of Iran, we know who our enemy is. And this is not me miles away from Iran saying that. It's the main slogan inside Iran. People refused to step on the flags of America and Israel, and they say that, Durugh Migan, Dushmanema Amrikas, Dushmanema Hamin Jost. They lie to us when they say that our enemy is America or Israel. Our enemy is the Islamic Republic. So I myself, as a woman's rights activist, I am brave enough if I see anything wrong in Israel, in America, in Europe, in France, everywhere, I'm loud enough to condemn it. I'm loud enough to criticize it. But now I need democracy to stand in the right side of the history. Because right now, Iranian schoolgirls are being under chemical attack. But this is not just one case that you're all witnessing. Those who actually ignored our fight against compulsory hijab, now they are loud enough. And they are trying to show their solidarity and sympathy. But you know what? It didn't need for Mahsa Amini, 22-year-old girl, to get killed for the whole world to wake up. It didn't need for Sarina, only 16-year-old girl, to get killed, for the whole world to show their solidarity. It didn't need for men to get executed for the crime of their, you know, supporting their sisters, Majid Reza Rahnavard, Mohsen, Muhammad, and many other are in the death row. Honestly, it didn't need for these innocent young girls and boys to get killed, for the whole world to understand that when we are fighting against compulsory hijab, we are fighting against one of the most barbaric regime in 21st century telling us what to wear. Many times, when I ask the leaders of democratic countries for support, they were hesitating. But now, they're showing their solidarity by cutting their hair. It is beautiful. It is beautiful to see that your sisters Female politicians, the high representative of EU, cutting their hair to show their solidarity with young girls and women in Iran. But again, that's very, very easy. And I really don't think that cutting your hair is enough. You have to cut your ties with the Islamic Republic. <laughs> you know why? The high representative of, I know that Swedish diplomats are here. I know that United Kingdom, um, United States of America, Canada, uh, many other democratic countries have uh, representative here. And we are just, you know, right next to United Nations. I have to use this opportunity and to say that still we have to find those four democratic countries who voted for the Islamic Republic to have a seat at the top women's body at United Nations. Still, we don't know 
those four democratic countries. Now I want to know because they must be accountable and take the lead, not only kicking out like the Islamic Republic from the United Nations, it's enough, it's, it's, it's beautiful, but it's still it's not enough. Why? Because I keep hearing from the leaders of democratic countries saying that now the re revolution is over. People are not in the streets and they are trying to get back to the nuclear talk. So I want them to pay attention to this famous expression that we use in journalism, which is when it bleeds, it leads. But honestly, we are talking about girls, children, kids are getting poisoned, getting raped and killed. And you really need to see bloodshed in the street to understand that this is a revolution? Another simple fact, when people were in the streets, when people were getting killed, what did you do? What did the United Kingdom do? What did you know, all those democratic countries did, apart from cutting their hair, apart from showing their solidarity? This is the right moment in our history. One of the most progressive revolutions is taking place. And I believe that we, the people of Iran, are better allies than these backward mullahs. So if you go back to the negotiation with those who don't believe in negotiation because taking hostage is in their diplomacy, killing is their diplomacy, assassinating is their diplomacy. So if you go back to the negotiation table, then the history will judge you. But not only that, you are going to face these terrorists on your own soil. There is a famous saying here in America that what happened in Vegas going to stay in Vegas. But believe me, what happens in the Middle East is not going to stay there. The Islamic Republic is more deadlier than coronavirus. And they will infect the rest of the world. Before coming here, I asked one of the teenagers who was the target of a uh, chemical attack. I interviewed her for my own show. And I asked her that, what is your message to the leaders of democratic countries? Because this is a revolution that you are leading it. And now you are being the target of the Islamic Repub Republic as a payback. It's a revenge by the Islamic Republic to push them back uh, from the streets and push them back behind the curtain. And she said very, very simply that, tell them that if I was their daughters, if I was their daughters and I was the target of chemical attack, what would they do? then do the same. Very simple. And she was saying that their daughters, the da daughters of the leaders in democratic countries, their only concern is to think about how to educate themselves in their schools. But now, we don't know if we are able to go back home after going to school. And uh, our main concern is to be alive, to survive. Our main concern is now to protect ourselves from morality police. And his, her simple message was this, if you're not helping us, then don't help our killers and our murderers. So recently, I asked the leaders of democratic countries um, to have an open investigation on this chemical attack on, on the school girls. In response, I heard from John Kirby from the United States of America asking the Islamic Republic to do an investigation. It means that you're asking criminals to investigate their own crimes. So I am here actually to tell you that the Islamic Republic systematically kills people, systematically oppress people, and they are good at systematically hide their own crimes. So you cannot ask criminals to investigate their own crimes when you have a specific example. A few years ago, the girls in Isfahan were the target of acid attack. You all remember that, no? What happened? Again, democratic countries call on Islamic Republic to do investigation. We achieved nothing. 
But now that I'm talking to you, those who actually protested against acid attack are in prison, including Nargis Mohammadi. But those who throw an acid on women's face, they are free. They are in charge to rape women. They are in charge to beat women in the streets. They are in charge to target schoolgirls on chemical attack. Another clear example is when the Islamic Republic actually, with their, uh, their revolutionary guards, shot down the Ukrainian airplane. Three days right after 176 is innocent passengers got killed, three days they were denying this. And believe me, if there were not Canadians, if they were not Americans among those who got killed, they wouldn't have admitted that. How many Iranians are here now? You believe that? If they were not Canadians and Iranians, you think that they were going to admit their own crimes? No. So that is why I am telling you, now it's only Iranian girls are getting killed. It's only Iranian men and women are getting executed. So that is why we need the United Nation to be tough, to have an open investigation about this crime. Otherwise, believe me, we're gonna receive nothing but when we don't send any signal to Islamic Republic, when there is no consequence, when there is no punishment, then there is no reason for them to stop killing their innocent people. For years and years, we've been actually, uh, all of you, listening that how bad is the human rights records in Iran, how bad actor is the Islamic Republic. So we all know that. But what we don't know is why the West hesitate to, Iranian, to help Iranians. So there are clear demands that Iranians want you to know. First, to recognize the Islamic Republic as a gender apartheid. Our new campaign, by our it means we the women of Iran and Afghanistan, has been launched recently to call on democratic countries to expand the definition of gender uh, to, to expand the definition of apartheid to include gender as well. So I don't think this is difficult because I'm coming from a country that girls from the age of seven won't be able to go to school. If I don't cover my massive hair, I get kicked out from school from the age of seven. I'm not allowed to sing. I'm not allowed to dance. I'm not allowed to travel abroad without getting permission from my husband or my male relative. Women are not allowed to run the country. Believe me, we the women of Iran we, and Afghanistan, we can run the country better than these backward mullahs and Taliban. Yeah. <laughs> women in Afghanistan being kicked out from school. Women in Iran are facing rape in prison right now. And it's not me saying that. CNN actually uh, revealed a story which uh, the Revolutionary Guards and some member of the Revolutionary Guards admitted that. So all the laws in Iran are anti-women. Women are second class citizens. We, we, we don't exist. We don't exist if we say no to Sharia laws. So if you don't call this regime a gender apartheid, then how do you call it? Tell me. So that's gonna make our way easier. If you help us to actually put the definition of gender apartheid in all the legal, uh, in all international laws, then no one dare to go and talk with a gender apartheid regime, especially President Biden. Because when he was young, he was the one actually pro supporting uh, the ban of South Africa because of apartheid. So you cannot just include racial uh, discrimination and then say that, okay, we don't care about women. America, Canada, Sweden, Norway, all the democratic countries are claiming that they're all for equality, they're all for women's rights, they're all for feminism. But suddenly, when it comes to Iran, okay, women and, women and men are not equal. When it comes to the West, all the female politicians saying that my body, my choice, and they're taking to the streets, they're brave enough to condemn Burkini ban, they're brave enough to condemn Muslim ban, 
But when it comes to Iran, they hesitate to do it. So they allow the government to use the bodies of a high representative of European Parliament as their own platform. And believe me, it makes me very, very angry when I see that even outside Iran, in the West, female politicians wearing hijab, bowing to Taliban. Wow, it doesn't make you angry. Honestly, this is unbelievable. So this is 21st century, and this is the clear demand that I, I came here to ask you to help us, especially if you call yourself human rights lover, democracy lover, feel these threats. If you don't stand with the women of Iran and the women of Afghanistan and expand the definition of apartheid to include gender apartheid, Honestly, we are all going to be in trouble because Taliban and Islamic Republic, they will expand their terrorism to US soil, Canadian soil, to the soil of Western countries. So with or without your help, I am very hopeful. The Islamic Republic took everything away from us, but not hope. I'm very hopeful with or without your help, we will get rid of the Islamic Republic very soon. But, there is a but here, but with your help, less children get killed. With your help, less women get raped. With your help, less women get kicked out from schools. With your help, less women suffer from chemical attack. And with your help, less innocent, brave men get hanged in Iran. I don't think this is too much to ask. Just think about it. And the day when you are sending your children to schools, even ask them to take action. Don't say that you're young. You, should, you shouldn't get involved in this uh, political fight. This is a fight of young generation in Iran. And now their parents are joining them and supporting them as well. Ask them to hold the picture of girls who lost their eyes. Ask them to hold the pictures of young teenagers in Iran who got killed, and they can be the, new genera the young generation here, your daughters, your sons, they can be an example for the leaders of democratic countries to be united the way that Putin and Khamenei are united. Thank you so much.